their home turf at Craven Park in Hull to a very warm reception but far from the maddening effects of the crowd at Wigan last Sunday when 30,000 people were on hand to witness the Kangaroos opening tour success. Of course, this side were the league champions in 84 and 85, and as I mentioned, on their trip to Webley in May this year, they were defeated by Castleford in the final of the Challenge Cup. They've started this season with mixed fortunes as the Australian team led out by Benny Elias. What a moment for him. We've got Greg Dowling, of course, Chris Mortimer, another big moment for him, and also Wally, the Queensland fullback, Gary Belcher. What a great year. This has culminated with his first appearance in Australia's colours. Yes, it certainly is, David. It wasn't all that long ago where, uh, where Gary wasn't even a representative footballer. Of course, Colin Scott holding down the state of origin fullback position for the first uh, for the first game. And Gary Belcher getting his opportunity and certainly grasping it in both hands and not letting it go. Well, the Kangaroos have played 13 matches here in the Craven Park. They have won 12. Uh, their loss was in 1967-68 when they defeated by 27 points to 15. In fact, the biggest crowd was back in 1921-22, 13,000 people at Craven Park. And there's the man in charge of this afternoon's match, or this evening's match, Geoffrey Kershaw, 43-year-old from York, who refereed the Challenge Cup final and the Lancashire Cup final in 1981 and has also refer refereed two internationals in his career, which, uh, in fact, has been uh, going around about 16 or 17 years. He could well, in fact, be in charge of a very fiery opening, as uh, we mentioned earlier, Wally, if uh, the last two appearances by Australian sides here at uh, Craven Park are any indication. Yes, that's a distinct possibility, David, although I think if, if there is any fireworks, it won't be started by the Australians. Um, we found in previous tours that uh, anything that even looks like it's a little bit illegal from the Australians certainly draws the attention of the referee, and we just can't afford to be giving away penalties all night long to English teams. OK, so Big Mal Meninga, who had such an outstanding second half in the opening tour match of the 82 Kangaroos, when Australia won that by 30 points to 12, was about to get this game underway, the second tour match of the Kangaroo Tour for 1986. And it's Hull Kingston Rovers who are taking out Benny Elias, leading uh, his country, as I mentioned for the first time, leading Australia's defence. It goes out now through the big second row forward, Harrison, and some solid defence out there by Australia in the form of Des Hasler. So it's Hull Kingston Rovers in possession of the ball now. It went out through Dorohy and in turn for uh, David Laws, but he was claimed in the tackle. Now it's back for Fairburn. The kick towards this commentary side of Craven Park. There's Gary Belcher, his first touch. And Gary Clark is the man that comes in to effect the tackle. Now Mortimer for Meninga. Well, they remember him, uh, Wally, from his appearance here in the Kangaroo Tour in 82 yeah. and also with St Helens. That's for sure. Mel uh, set the English crowds alight with his first appearance in this country in 82 and I'm sure they all too well remember him. Well, there's Langmack and uh, Dunn combining down the blind side for the Australians. Elias now and it goes out through Hasler and taken upfield by Martin Bell. A beautiful pass. And finally, it's taken in the tackle that time by Greg Dowling. That's a magnificent start for Martin Bell. It's the first time he's touched the ball for Australia and has produced uh, a great front rower's pass. There's Steve Folks taken inside the 22. Australia in possession and on the attack. Terry Lamb hoisted high in the air. It's a well-placed bomb. Fairburn goes up and takes it well. And the penalty has gone against, and against uh, Australia as the tempers are already starting to flare. But I think a player was taken out, Wally, while the ball was in the air by one of uh, Australia's advancing backs. Well, just by that call, David, it looks like he, he may have even penalised Australia for being in front of the kicker um, and, and duly penalised them back about an extra 10 metres as well. So it's a chance now to see Hull Kingston Rovers on the attack for the first time. As it's taken up this time by Andy Kelly, he's wrapped up well and truly in the tackle. He's up quickly for the ball now. There's Harrison. There's the kick from Dorothy, the ball out in touch on the fall, in fact, from the 5'8th Mike Smith. So that's where the scrum will pack down inside Hull Kingston Rovers' end of the ground. So the scrum to be fed by Des Hasler of Australia. And a penalty, in fact, will go against Hasler for the incorrect feed. Yes, I think you can uh, expect a fair bit of this, David. Australians always seem to have trouble feeding the ball into the scrums over there, although... Uh... 
when the, uh, the scrums are fed in the same manner by the English, they never seem to draw as much attention by the referees. So it's John Dorohy to kick for touch. Channel 10, in fact, had to supplement the lighting here at Craven Park for this telecast to get underway. We do apologise uh, if the pictures aren't even still up to scratch, but we've been battling for the last three or four days to be able to bring this match to you. As the ball's taken up by Zook Emma, the big prop forward for Hull Kingston Rovers. Now Harrison. The man into dummy half is Chris Rudd. Parker. So play inside Australia's end of the ground by about five metres. Broadhurst. But that's solid defence by Australia inside their own half. Of it. In fact, about ten metres inside Australia's half as the ball is put down into Australia's quarter. That's Belcher retreating. And he allows the ball to go dead in goal. So play, in fact, will come back to the quarter line for the restart of play. So no score in this match. We've had about four minutes in the first half as Dowling runs it out and takes play to about 10 metres outside the Australian 22. Benny Elias running for dummy half. Now, what's this signal, Wally? You've played over here in Great Britain. Good. I struggled last Sunday to pick up the interpretation. Is it incorrect uh, play the ball? Well, he's got the player running onto the ball, David, being penalised for being inside the five metres. And I mean, it, if they're going to do this, they'll be penalising blokes from both teams all night long. And I think the sooner this bloke just forgets about it and gets on with the referee in the game uh, under the same rules for both teams, the better the game's going to be. OK, so it's uh, Joe Cool, John Dorohy, to attempt the first uh, shot at penalty goal in this match with five minutes gone. Dorohy so far in 86 has scored 26 points for Hull Kingston Rovers from three tries and seven goals. Remembering, of course, in May at the Wembley Cup final against Castleford, he probably still has very bitter memories, Wally, of that kick that went astray, which uh, could well have kept them in the match. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's an unfortunate thing, but uh, as a lot of people here remember, he did miss the kick, but I think uh, being a little bit unfair to him, the kick was right from, from the a half line. a metre inside the touchline, and there's not too many people that would handle those uh, conditions throughout their rugby league careers. And I'm sure when you've got 100,000 people uh, live at the game and then another couple of million people around the world watching you, you certainly do feel the, world, the weight of the world on your shoulders. So John Dorohy with the ball place moves in. Chance to put Hull Kingston Rovers in the lead. And that looks a great kick. And so the Robins lead the Kangaroos by two points to nil here at Craven Park. We've had just on five minutes of play. Certainly have been given a fair bit of a hand uh, so far in the game. OK, Benny Elias coming in. Robbed the, robbed the possession, that's Lamb. Australia on the attack inside the 22. So Elias, the man slipping into dummy half. On the blind side, goes Dowling. I Makes it valuable three or four metres. I think we've got a bit of bad news for Australia here, David. Stephen Folks is, uh, is holding that groin injury he's had for a long time. And it certainly doesn't look too good at the moment. I just hope for uh, the, uh, the tourist's sake that it only ends up being a cork or something because it doesn't look too good at the moment. Well, that has been a contentious point, Stephen Folks. Struggled right through the latter part of the 1986 Winfield Premiership in Sydney after sustaining that injury in the third test against New Zealand. And a lot of people thought that he may have been uh, a doubtful member of this kangaroo side because of that fitness problem. So let's hope that isn't a recurrence of that injury because Stephen Folks obviously is still well in line for the first test match at Old Trafford in just a week or two's time. So a penalty goes against Hull Kingston Rovers. And Big Mal Meninga coming across. No, Elias is electing to keep the pressure on Hull Kingston Rovers. I think so, you'll see a move here, David, that we've been using for quite some time where we try and spin the ball as far across the field as, uh, as early as possible. Meninga wrapped up well and truly by Bostead. He's lost the ball. And finally, it's picked up by Terry Lamb. Australia on the attack again, Elias from dummy half, and you can expect to see him do a lot tonight from that position. Here's Lamb, great support play through the dummy and takes play to 10 metres short of the whole Kingston Rovers line. Once again, Elias running wide through the dummy, through he goes. Elias short, is it a try? It's a try to Australia, scored by Betty Elias, and Australia in the lead by four points to two. It's extremely good work there, David, from Benny. He's, uh, he's managed to... Uh 
to spot that the markers weren't too quick to move off the mark. And he's got a very good ducking game, Ben. He's, as you can see, he's got under two tackles there and a, a very feeble attempt from George Fairburn in the end to try and stop him, but not taking anything away from Benny. He's done very well to score from that far out. OK, so Benny Elias puts Australia in the lead by four points to two. And we've had just on uh, seven and a half minutes of play in this first half. So Mal Meninga has the ball placed. The highest point scorer on the Kangaroo Tour of 1982. With 166 points, he's kicked over 100 points in State of Origin matches. And opens his account on the Kangaroo Tour of 1986 with a great conversion. And so Australia in the lead by six points to two. So John Dorohy with the ball placed to restart this match. And immediately that the, the Robins got in front, what a reply by the Kangaroos, Wally. Yes, certainly a great reply there, David, and uh, I'm sure that uh, Benny Elias will be elated after that. It's certainly uh, a great way, and looks like he's going to uh, play a real captain's knock this evening. Well, have you picked up the progress on um, Stephen Folkes? Because uh, while I was looking there, that try was scored. It, it looks like he's recovered a little bit. now. Hopefully it wasn't, wasn't his groin. It, it looked like he may have picked up a cork, but uh, we're only hoping here. Dale Shearer, his first touch on the Kangaroo Tour. Elias in a dummy half, back it goes for Meninga. The long driving kick downfield over the head of Clark. What a great, great kick, kick from the big Queensland centre. And that puts Australia right back on attack inside the Robins' end of the ground. I think you'll see adopt, Australia adopt these, uh, these sort of tactics, David. They'll just work it up for a couple inside their own territory and then kick the ball. But uh, I'm not really sure. I, think, I thought it should have been Australia's loose head there after kicking early in the tackle count. There's some good defence. The man that came out very quickly from the back of the scrum was Paul Langmack. Out and goes through Parker. More solid defence that time by uh, Stephen Folks. Stephen Folks. Right here. That's the sort of thing that they're looking for in the test match. A very fit Stephen Folks. His work rate in the uh, earlier test matches against New Zealand was outstanding, Wally. That's right, David. I, I hadn't played with Stephen until last year's uh, test series, in this year's test series in New Zealand. He's certainly a, a valuable acquisition to any side. The amount of defensive work he gets through in the middle of the ruck, you just can't replace a player like him. Dorohy, back to Fairburn. Evaded one tackle. Drove it downfield. Picked up by Gary Belcher. He elects to run it. Beat one tackle. Support of Mortimer. Got under the tackle of Mike Smith. And that's a penalty to Australia. That's against the big second row forward, Andy Kelly. And so a chance for Meninga to drive play back inside. Hull Kingston Rovers end of the ground. The penalty's favouring. The home side to the tune of three to two. But Australia leading the ball game by six points to two. Martin Bella. I tell you what, his uh, determination impressed me in the opening minutes, Wally. He's really taken the ball up strongly. Yes, he's had a marvellous year, Martin Bella, David. Uh, when he went to Sydney, I thought that uh, he'd go, he would go well, but I thought it might take him a little bit longer to settle in. But he just has proven... Uh, what ability he has got, and I'm sure that he's going to get better as the years go by, but uh, certainly a great start by him so far. There's Hasler, Terry Lamb, Belcher in the line. He's in the clear, Mortimer, one to beat. Back inside, Terry Lamb, and what a great try by Australia. He should be backing up. It's not surprising to see Terry Lamb, the man to back up. He's uh, been some amazing people week in and week out at Sydney Boys' ability to back the ball up and uh, scoring his first try for Australia. So, as Wally mentioned, we've seen him do it so often in the Sydney Premiership in 86. Terry Lamb, regarded as probably one of the great support players in Sydney, has put Australia in the lead by 10 points to two. And we've had just on 13 minutes of play in this first half. Australia showing already, David, a real willingness to throw the ball around out wide, and they've got the confidence about them now. They're a little bit shaky when they went out on the field because they did have a, a distinct lack of experienced players out there, but they're just letting their ability speak for themselves so far, and they're playing uh, very creditably so far. So Meninga, one from one so far. Great play by Belcher and Mortimer in the lead-up to that try. And the ever-present Terry Lamb was the man that backed up to score it. 
So Meninga with the ball placed. It's only less than half a metre in from touch on this broadcast side of Craven Park. Right on the tail of the quarter line, there's the kick. It's going left of the upright, no goal. And so the scoreline, Australia 10, lead Hull Kingston Rovers 2. So despite the depleted side, Hull Kingston Rovers, it's still some, a fair bit of talent out there, Wally, but uh, the real big test is now, can they come back? Well, I think they're having the home advantage, David. They always seem to play strong throughout the game. Obviously, they don't want to disappoint their fans too much. And believe me, when English fans get disappointed over there, they let their home players know all about it. So Dowling just brushed through the tackle or the attempted at tackle of Broadhurst. Elias out to Hasler. Lagmack takes play to about eight metres short of the halfway line. Elias. Bella. And again, a good strong bumping run. The pass went forward. Picked up by Dale Shearer. And the referee has allowed play to go on. Although the crowd obviously felt the way I did that the pass, in fact, from Bella did go forward. So Australia still on the attack. It goes out through Hasler. Meninga, the big fellas in the clear. Belcher is cut out of the pass. has gone and strike. Picked up by Mortimer. And he's finally taken in the tackle by Dorothy. Now Dowling for Lamb. He hoists it high in the air, putting pressure on Fairburn, the fullback. He took it well. Ran spare on the goal line before he was taken in the tackle by Gene Miles. So, Hull Kingston Rovers pegged on their own line. Trailing by 10 points to two. Dunn missed the tackle. Dowling cleaned it up. Now it's picked up by Hasler. And that is good defence. I think you saw there a classic difference, David, of... Uh the different styles of, of Australian and English rugby league, they don't mind throwing the ball around too much at all, close to their own line, whereas the Australians tend to work it out uh, for a couple of rucks and play it downfield. English are, are quite content to, to throw the ball around very close to their own line. Well, Mal Meninga is pegged for using Gary Belcher as the obstruction on that particular move by the Australian three quarters. And so a penalty goes to Hull Kingston Rovers. And the man in possession of the ball at the moment is John Dorahy. Driving play up over halfway. And so, the Robins with a chance to launch an attack. She that solid defence by Stephen Fox. Stephen Fox, a tremendous tackle. Just his size, uh, yeah, his ability to hit. There's Harrison. Dowling went low. Meninga over the top. Emma. And a penalty goes against Paul Dunn for not allowing Zook Emma to play the ball uh, correctly. So another penalty goes, in fact, against the, the Tourist, who currently lead by 10 points to two. Just prior to the penalty there, David, I'm sure that coach Johnny Ferner would be very happy with the way the Australians moved up in their defensive line. They were moving up very quickly and also very straight. And there was certainly some solid hitting going on there and Stephen Folks, of course, showing the way. I just hope that, uh, that the Australians can keep this up. I've got no doubt that they can, but uh, I, I think that they might get a little bit carried away with our lead if we tend to get too far in front. Well, a chance for that lead to be pegged back by John Dorahy. He struck his first penalty attempt very nicely indeed to raise the flags for the first two points of the bat. And now he has a chance to add two further points to the whole Kingston Rovers tally. Of course, as I mentioned at the beginning of the telecast, the Robins coach by that great little English player, Roger Millwood, took over in 1977 as coach of Hull Kingston Rovers. As Dorahy moves in. Let's watch the flight of the ball. It looks good. The flags go up and Dorahy makes it two from two. And the scoreline, 10 points to four in favour of Australia. And Wally, that's an ominous sign. John Dory, he uh, in form with that right boot. Yes, great kicking from John Dory. That, uh, that ball was only two or three metres inside uh, the halfway, David. I'm sure that his confidence will be sky high around now. So Meninga drives play right to the goal line of Hull Kingston Rovers. And Elias up there to effect the tackle with Stephen Folks. That's Harrison. And Miles in there to effect the tackle with Hasler. So, Hull Kingston Rovers pegged down on their own line. Harrison very slowly to his feet. There's some confusion. 
And so play will be restarted with the goal line dropout. But certainly uh, the Hull Kingston Rovers were at sixes and sevens then as Australia applied that pressure. Harrison's uh, very slow to his feet, Wally. Well, he really was crunched by Folks and Elias in that tackle. And Gene Miles. That's right. Gene, I think, was the one that, uh, that came up with the hit there and it certainly seems to have made the bloke very groggy and I think this is the major difference between the two sides their ability to come up with constant hard-hitting defense so Bella slips into dummy half as Elias plays the ball Hasler Miles oh there's the intercept by Dorothy so Hulk are back with the ball on their own 22 and a penalty against Australia inside the five I know Wally Lewis probably can't say too much, but he oh, just shook his head at geez. the decision. Well, try not to be too critical of this bloke, mate, but uh, he wasn't even watching where he penalised the guys. He was running backwards, and how he's decided to come up with a penalty out there is, is beyond comprehension. So Dorothy, with a chance to drive play up again to the halfway line. And that's where Hull Kingston Rovers will get play back underway through their hooker, Chris Rudd. Broadhurst wrestled to the ground. Rudd again in a dummy half. Out through Parker and Smith. And that's ha that's uh, Kelly. Driven back on the halfway line. <laughs> Smith's a man that lost possession. Well, we have a replacement player on the field. We have young David Busby. On the field for Hull Kingston Rovers. He's a fellow that uh, played, in fact, in Group 6 with Barrel earlier this year under the coaching of Merv Hicks. So he's going to pack in, it looks like, to in the second row. And we'll try and pick up who, in fact, the front row's intact. I've got a feeling that uh, maybe Harrison is the man that's gone off the field after that tackle by Gene Miles. Well, yes, it certainly was a, a, a big hit, and uh, he seemed to be feeling the effects around the uh, around his chest. Well, we've yet to see much of Kerry Bosted in this match so far, playing uh, an outside centre for the Hull Kingston Rovers side. Oh, Clark leaves it behind him, and the referee Kershaw has no hesitation in blowing the whistle to set a scrub down midway between the half and the quarter line at Hull Kingston Rovers end of the ground. So Hasler, ball into the scrub. It's an Australian scrum win. Belcher, stepped nicely, beat one. Got the pass away, oh, Lamb. Pass. Put the glasses down, Terry Lamb for the line, and he'll go over for his second try. A tremendous try by Australia, set up by Gary Belcher. Finished off by Terry Lamb, and it's 14 points to four in favour of the Winfield Kangaroos. Yes, you can see them just taking the ball uh, from, away from the scrum here. Uh, George Fairburn, uh, a little bit slow to react to Gary Belcher's step there, but a magnificent pass from Belcher to put the bloke who is always backing up away for a try. And although it uh, did seem he was going to get pulled in a metre short, he seemed to be able to uh, just get enough leverage off pushing Kerry Boosted away. So Terry Lamb will remember his debut on English soil. Two tries already, and we've had just on 22 minutes of play in this first half. Mal Meninga, one from two so far. Raises the flag, so it's 16 points to four in favour of the Kangaroos and the crowd very, very silent here at Craven Park. I think they're a little bit disappointed in, in Rovers' form at the moment. Uh, they haven't had the happiest start to the season, and I was just talking to Gavin Miller in the dressing room before the game, and he just went through the horrifying stretch of injuries that they've had. I think they've had something like six people with broken arms or or, uh, or legs, and, of course, Gavin has broken his foot, so it is, has been a very bad start for them, and they've just got to uh, just keep hanging in there. Well, if you look at the uh, the lineup of the players missing, Wally, you've got uh, players like Paul Harkin, David Watkinson, uh, Gavin Miller, as you mentioned, Chris Burton, Phil Hogan and Gordon Smith, the former uh, New Zealand international, so that really does leave uh, a big hole in the side. Yeah, it certainly does. That's a crippling run of injuries that they've had, and I'm sure that uh, they'd be very disappointed they couldn't have had a, a better side on the field tonight. There goes Paul Dunn, another damaging run upfield, but uh, slipping in there to affect the tackle is Smith, the 5'8", of Hull Kingston Ravers. Back it goes now for Meninga. A long, spiralling punt kick downfield. 
Fairburn takes it 10 metres inside uh, his own 22, angling it towards touch. And that's a great kick by the former England fullback. A 79 tourist to Australia. He's been capped 17 times for his country. And is currently in his fifth season with the Hull Kingston Ravers after being a former player coach with Wigan. I think that's the best way to play against Australians at the moment, David, because they seem to be having a little bit of trouble making yardage. And, of course, George just electing there to take the easy way with 50 yards off the boot. Gary Belcher split the line. Who's in support? None other than Terry Lamb. And he goes straight to Fairbairn's defence. Elias. Switch of play. Hasler. The Mortimer. Mortimer up towards the 22. Kick forward. Terry Lamb again is going to win the race to the ball. Oh, but it's knocked away. There's the little halfback there, Wayne Parker, doing very well to get back and kick that ball away. Otherwise, it would have been Terry Lamb three tries. He bobs up everywhere, Willie. Yes, he he's a uh, hard man to keep out of the match. That was clever play by Mortimer, too. He saw that he was closed in on this left flank and got that left foot uh, centre kick in as Gary Belcher takes play right on the halfway line, takes it up to the 22, and oh, the intercept knocked forward by Clark the wing. That's the third time he's touched it, the third time he's put it down. Benny Elias, Martin Bella. Well, he'll make some yardage up the middle. Unloaded it to Folks. And Folks flung to the ground by Kelly, the second row forward of Hull Kingston Rovers. Dowling. Really disappointed that uh, he didn't play against his old club, Wigan, at the weekend. Is making up for it tonight here against Hull Kingston Rovers. Lovely pass from Dunn to, to Miles. Miles has the support of Langmack, and Langmack goes over. Gee, that's a good try, that, David. And I think if you have a look on the replay here, you'll see all the schools involved at rugby league. The ability to back, back players up and uh, get short balls through the gap. It well, the Canterbury just... boys enjoying this tonight, Wally. Well, that's right. You get Paul Dunn slipping a marvellous pass away there to Gene Miles, who backed up. A great sidestep, and, of course, another Canterbury boy backing up in Paul Langmack. So they're certainly uh, making their mark on the game felt at the moment, the Canterbury connection, and uh, making uh, Australia's run towards this game so much easier. So it's 20 points to four in favour of the Kangaroos. And Mal Meningas up to attempt yet another conversion. He's kicked two from three so far. Well, 1982, Wally, the Hull Kingston Rovers side led that match by eight points to five in a bruising first 40 minutes before uh, this man who's attempting the conversion, Mal Meninga and Peter Sterling, put their mark on the game. And Australia began the tour on a winning note, 30 points to 12. Yeah, that's right. That was a great game, that one. We uh, certainly encountered a lot of resistance from Hull. And, of course, Hull in those days, uh, Hull Kingston Rovers in those days, really did have uh, a, a great side. Not taking anything away from the players in this match, but uh, the side of 82 certainly was an awesome sight. And it took us a, a long, long time to get on time with them. 20 points to four. Australia in the lead over Hull Kingston Rovers. And play about to be restarted once again by John Dorohy. So Australia have scored four tries in the opening 26 minutes of this first half in a very bright opening to the second tour match. They won their first match by 26 points to 18 at Wigan on Sunday. Dowling takes play upfield outside his 22, taken by Emma. Now Elias in a dummy half. Got the pass to Lamb. Well, that pass looked pretty spot on to me. But the crowd went up, and referee Kershaw reacted. There's a scrub win. Very good feed there, David. <laughs> Home town decision. <laughs> so Dunn affecting the tackle. Hello, tempers flaring, and in comes the touch judge. God. Oh. Referee Kershaw. Who's he going to call out? So Des gonna, Hasler. Yes, he's going to caution Des Hasler here for, uh, for trying to push the bloke back that uh, originally pushed him. Not only do that, he's going to penalise him. And so another chance for John Dorohy. Of course, the uh, National Panasonic Company have put up a great award for the kangaroo of the tour. Judging 3-2-1 on the first matches. Well, the matches right throughout the tour. The first match, of course, Brian Niebling got the three points from Peter Sterling and Brett Kenny. And at the end of the series, this entire English leg of the tour, $5,000 worth of National Panasonic products to 
the kangaroo of the tour and of course Winfield are putting up a thousand dollar cash incentive for the man of the match in each of the three test matches Greg Dowling in on Kelly and a penalty goes against Aus against Australia so the penalties eight to two in favor of Hull Kingston Rovers and who's being called out Benny Elias Okay, so Benny's been given the direction from referee Kershaw. And John Dorohy elects to look for the two points. Well, Wally, this really has been a bright start. 30 minutes gone in this second match. Uh, a great start on Sunday to get up in the first game. And then, of course, a very, very bright beginning of this first uh, half here at Craven Park. Yes, I'm sure Donny Fern would be extremely, uh, extremely happy with the start they've got now. But I just see Larry Britton, the uh, our trainer, coming out to have a word to Mel Monegan, and I'm sure it'll be a message from Donny Ferner to just instruct our blokes to keep their dukes down a little bit, not worry about uh, trying to punch blokes and tackles, that sort of thing, because they really have been doing it easy so far, and all we're doing at the moment is putting ourselves under a little bit of pressure by giving well, away... Uh, remembering that uh, Rocket Reddy and Les Boyd were given their marching orders here in 1982. It's something that the Australians don't really want. So early in the tour is Jadara, he moves in. Can he make it three from three? It looks good. The flags go up. And so the scoreline here at Craven Park, Australia 20, lead Hull Kingston Rovers six. Well, there's not much of him. If you look at the uh, statistics of Stephen Folks, only 13 and a half stone. But doesn't he pack some power to those punches, those uh, tackles, Wally? Yes, he certainly does. You know, it, it seems to be the uh, the smaller blokes with the best timing, are the, are the best tacklers in the game at the moment. Stephen Folks and, uh, of course, Wally Fulton-Smith is, is very similar. So the ball gone forward after Elias affected uh, a great tackle there. So another scrub will pack down. Right on the 22, Australia leading by 20 points to six. Second match of the Kangaroo Tour for 1986. Oh, how does the referee allow that to go on? That ball never went in the scrum, but Miles now got the pass away beautifully to Lamb. Beautiful pass to Meninga. And the Australian backs move into full fight here at Craven Park. Mortimer. There's certainly a lot of confidence about them at the moment, David. Well, Dale, Dale Shearer has come in for the right wing, looking for work as well. Elias now at a dummy half. It goes out to Hasler, in a turn for Lamb. Out to Miles, has Belcher in support. But once again, we've seen the penalty go for obstruction, or as we would know it in Australia, the shepherding. And it's something they do appear uh, to be quite severe on. Wally, we saw it uh, three or four times in the match against Wigan. Yes, they're fairly thick on it over here. Um... So, the play to get underway again through the hooker rod, and he's pinged them inside the 10. Actually, I love this guy measuring my carpets, Wally. He's, uh, he's pretty liberal, isn't he? <laughs> yes, I'd certainly hate to run a marathon with him. You'd end up running about 50 miles. So, George Fairburn. To look the, for touch. The on the far uh, side. Penalties are starting to give us a bit of a hard time, David. Uh, Favouring the home side, 10 to 2. So, a chance with Broadhurst. Hull Kingston Rovers with Emma. Elias went low. Here they go again. Out through Parker. In turn for the lock forward Speckman. Rudd slips into dummy half. Broadhurst. Good defence by Australia. Rudd. Goes out through Parker into Smith. There's a kick over the top, but that's too deep. And that goes over the very short in-goal area here at Craven Park. And play, in fact, will come back to the quarter line for the restart of play. Australians looking to get on the game very quickly here, and I think that's uh, probably the biggest difference between Australian and English football. Look at Greg Dowling. Game. Support play. Elias in a dummy half. And already the Australians have made a valuable 25 metres in one play. Martin Bella. Elias now, again a dummy half. He looked for Hasler on the left. And in turn for Lamb. He's, the pass has gone forward. Well, the referee will have no option but to pack the scrum down. But the Australians, Wally, have really shown that willingness to throw it around. And uh, so far, they've been rewarded with four tries in the first half. 
Yes, it's very good uh, and refreshing to see open rugby league after um, so much of the game in Australia is based on defence. Um, it really is a, a great spectacle. I'm sure the English do enjoy it. Nicely taken by Belcher. Beat one tackle and couldn't beat Smith. And so Gene Miles this time will get play underway again for the Australians. Running from dummy half. Picked up by Kelly and driven back with the aid of Emma the prop forward, but the whole Kingston Rovers come away with it. And it's been stolen by John Dorothy. Now they move again, out to Broadhurst, and in time for Busby. And Busby takes play to about eight metres short of the quarter line. It's Australia in the lead by 20 points to six. Parker, Smith, Kelly, the ball's gone loose, picked up by Shearer. And again it's gone loose. And that player dives on it for Hull Kingston Rovers. It's Kelly. Now they go on the blind side. Oh, oh great, great tackle by Folks. And a touch judge it again. Gee, you wouldn't see a better tackle anywhere in the world than that one from Stephen Folks. Well, the touch judge appears to have said that Stephen Folks has come in with an elbow there. I'm not sure whether it's just our eyes, David, or, or whether he's seen something different well, to let's us. have a look at it. This is a bone jarrer. Oh, goodness me. Nothing illegal at all in that tackle. But Hull Kingston Rovers get their 11th penalty of the match. Perhaps he could have got us, got Stephen there for a, for a tackle that's a little bit high, but I mean, if he's going to penalise to people for tackling high, the penalties would be favouring us about 100 to nil. So as Paul Speckman was the man that felt the full brunt of that tackle from Stephen Folkes. As George Fairburn comes up to try and drive it inside Australia's 22. Into the final five minutes of this first half, Australia lead by 20 points to six. Four tries to nil by the Kangaroos in the first half. Gee, that's good solid defence again by Australia. Martin Bella and Daly combining. And it goes down through Parker and it turned to Busby, but he's driven back by Paul Dunn. Chris Rudd, a dummy half, again to Parker. Speckley got the ball away to Bostad. Kerry Bostad scores. Well, I think the first time, Wally, that he's touched the ball, and Bowie's done it again. Yes, he's, a, he's an electric little player, Bowie. You've only got to give him half a yard to move in, and he certainly makes the most of it. Well, he scored two tries against Salford last week. He scored Hull Kingston Rovers first this half tonight. It was a great pass for Speckley. And despite an injured broken leg earlier this year, Bostead has lost little or none of his pace. Yes, it looked a little bit questionable on the end, didn't it? But uh, full marks to Bowie. He's come back from a couple of bad injuries over the last couple of years. And if any bloke deserves it on the field, uh, you'd certainly wish that he scored that try. Well, I mentioned earlier, Wally, we'd hardly seen him. I think from memory, that is his first touch of the match. Uh, he's picked up a couple of loose balls, but the first time he's touched it uh, with the ball going across the line. Yes, and I'm sure there'd be no happier player to, to score a try against Australia than, than Bowie. I, I know he's an extremely disappointed bloke to miss out on the tour, having uh, had so many bad injuries during the year. And, well, what uh, a great fine ambassador he has been for his country, 25 internationals for the oh, boys from Innisfile. He came into the scene, I think, what, back in 1978, 79. That's right, yeah. I'm sure that uh, only injuries have stopped him from probably being the most capped Australian representative ever. And uh, it certainly is a shame to lose a bloke of his ability. So John Dorohy, his Australian centre partner in this whole Kingston Rovers lineup, has had 100% record so far. It has just been ruined. As his attempted conversion goes well to the left of the uprights. And it's 20 points to 10 in favour of the Kangaroos. Look a little bit flat and... Uh, I think they were starting to get, a, get the uh, hitting the brick wall feeling after quite some time. Well, Des Hasler's coming off the ground. Greg Alexander is coming on for Australia. Yes, so I'm the young sure Penrith halfback makes his Australian debut. I'm sure it's a very proud moment for, uh, for Greg at the moment. And all Penrith know just how good he is. And I'm sure that the rest of Australia is waiting just to see how he handles it. I'm sure he'll make a, a great fist of his first representation. Wally, he came into the side for the injured uh, Eric Groth. Was he overawed at all when he arrived at the, the airport to go? Was he overawed at all at the, the I, way he I, came into the side? I don't think so. I think he was a little bit uh, shocked, as everybody is, the first time they get called into an Australian side. I think he felt uh, 
extremely proud and he's gonna he's gonna go on and rep Australia represent Australia for quite some time I feel Dale Shearer good defense the ball's gone loose and so a scrub will go down I'm sure I know what the ruling would have been in the uh, Winfield Premiership in Sydney at that play wall well, the referee gave the signal for uh, pulling the ball out of the man's hands in the tackle, so uh, <laughs> good feed. Oh, Smith was in no man's land there, picked up by Miles, support this time of Alexander. Greg Alexander. Oh, beautiful run. Meninga lost it, and it's picked up by Bosted. So Hull Kingston Rovers through Emma on the blind side. Driven by Terry Lamb. Into the final minute or so towards half time. Another mistake by Hull Kingston Rovers. Gee, Paul Lee makes showed magnificent hands here to scoop that ball up, Dave. Part of the uh, Canterbury back row of Langmack, Dunn and Folks. Elias. Through the dummy, Benny Elias. The pass to Bella. And the pass has been ruled forward. So, an Australian scoring chance goes begging with the pass from Elias to Martin Bella being ruled forward. But they have in fact scored four tries to one in this first half here at Craven Park to be leading by 20 points to 10. The second match of the Kangaroo Tour of 1986. There's folks in there again. Another solid tackle by the Australian second row forward. I'm certain he'll be way in front of the tackle count at the moment. He's uh, certainly leading the way. He's one of, although he's only played a couple of tests, he's probably one of the most experienced players we have on the field. Here's Dale Shearer, taken by Smith, right in the centre of the field. Greg Alexander at dummy half. Bella. He's had a very impressive opening to his campaign here in Britain. Martin Bella has run with great determination. Benny Elias. Allowed to run again from dummy half as the Hooter sounds at Craven Park with Australia in the lead by 20 points to 10 with tries to Elias, two to Terry Lamb and one to Paul Langmack. Meninga two goals from four attempts and for Hull Kingston Rovers boasted a try. Dorahy three goals from four attempts. We'll be back with more of the action right after this commercial break. And as we welcome you back to Craven Park at Hull, Australia lead by 20 points to 10 at half time against Hull Kingston Rovers, a club over the years, Wally, that uh, has had a fair smattering of Australians, probably the most famous, other than uh, John Dorohy, Gavin Miller and uh, Kerry Bosted, was your coach at Queensland, the great Artie Beetson back in 1968-69. Yes, that's right, and they've, uh, they've put out a brochure here uh, commemorating tonight's game of course and there's a picture of a very slim Arthur Beetson in there somebody that not too many in Australia would uh, would remember but uh, is still very much loved here and of course many people asking still how Arthur is in Australia and he's still a, a very widely respected man and of course Bob Smithies and Alan Fitzgibbon were here in the early 70s as was Lindsay and, Peter, Lindsay and Peter Johnson last year in 85 86 Peter of course winning the trip to Wembley for the cup final but uh, Gavin Miller is missing tonight but Dorohy and Kerry Bosted have scored all of Hull Kingston Rovers' points in the first half, but they trail by 20 points to 10 with the Kangaroos in possession of the ball with Shearer trying to unload it to Elias. But he was finally wrapped up on the quarter line by the 5'8 Smith. So Australia scoring four tries to one in the first half as Dowling makes inroads into the whole Kingston Rovers defence before he's claimed by Broadhurst. That's Elias at dummy half. It goes back to Big Mal Meninga. Puts his right foot to the ball, driving it deep downfield towards the fullback Fairbairn. He elects to try and run it outside his 22, but well taken by Lamb. He's lost it. And finally picked up by Paul Dunn. And the referee now in there trying to decide who has possession. Oh, how does it go back Good. to whole Kingston Man. Rovers? Cannot believe that decision as Emma takes it up to 10 metres outside his own goal line. I think the only thing you can uh, get out of that, David, is that he's playing in the advantage. Uh, English referees sometimes do decide, uh, even after two or three knock-ons, to play an advantage rule. A 
gets Emma. Out to Parker. In turn for Smith. Pivoted out of one tackle. And he's pinned just inside his own 22. So, big Andy Kelly in a dummy half. Out to Broadhurst. That's Parker. Takes play outside the 22. And it appears that Paul Dunn has come up with the ball for Australia. Elias. And penalty. Only the fourth penalty. Or the third penalty to Australia. In 45 minutes of football, 11-3. The penalties now in favour of Hull Kingston Rovers. So Elias drives play inside the danger area in defence for Hull Kingston Rovers. They're about 12 metres out from the line. Lamb out to Miles. Beautiful pass for Meninga. And a barraging run from the big Queensland centre. Quickly to his feet. Makes another two metres before he's claimed in the tackle. Dory he down injured after that attempt to tackle on Big Bal Meninga. Dunn stood in the tackle. Over the top came Kelly. Now Elias from dummy half. Lamb, Elias. Ran straight to Kelly and also to Zook Emma. Greg Dowling, don't be surprised to see him go on his own. Folks, showed the ball and went head down. Five metres out from the whole Kingston Rovers line. Elias. There's the kick through by Alexander. Ball and towed over the top that time by David Laws. But play will come back to the goal line for the restart of play. Very lucky that he did tow that ball over the line as well there, David. Terry Lamb would have had his third try otherwise. Shearer traps it soccer style. Oh, dreadful defence from Hull Kingston Rovers. Elias through one. Buddy Elias will score his second try of the match. And Australia go further ahead here at Craven Park. Benny's obviously summed up the, uh, the English defence a lot here, David. That's the second time he's managed to break right through. And if you just have a look at the style he, he uses uh, as he goes through the tackles, he managed to duck under uh, all of the tackles, but it really shouldn't have been uh, allowed to get that far with the, uh, the amount of high tackles used by the English here. They just uh, failed to, to put the uh, tackle player on the ground. Well, that's done standing at the tackle. Now we see Elias finishing it off through the dummy. That's woeful defence over the top. And the little Balmain hooker streets away for his second try of the match. So Terry Lamb assuming the goal-kicking role for Australia. Melbourne Inger had kicked two from four in the first half. Lamb with the ball placed. The highest point scorer in the Sydney Premiership this year. Moves in. A confident start to the England tour. Tremendous kick from Terry Lamb, and it's 26 points to 10 in favour of the Kangaroos. Well, it's not a bad third string kick and a half of the touring party, uh, Wally. Yes, he certainly is. It's, uh, it was a very difficult kick for him, but he seemed to make it uh, look very easy. Oh, that's beautifully taken by Paul Dunn. As if he had it on a piece of string. Elias. Langmack stepping run by the Canterbury lock forward. Elias runs from dummy half again. Threw another dummy. Got the pass back to his opposite number. Chris Rudd. I mentioned earlier in the first half that I thought I'd see a lot of running from Benny Elias tonight, and he hasn't let us down, Wally. No, he's got a very good running game, Benny. It's, uh, it starts at, at Belmain, where he manages to get a lot of support there, and he certainly does make things a lot easier for the, the guys running onto the ball. He sees that uh, if they're going to get heavily tackled by a bloke, he opts to take the, the tackle himself, and more often than not, manages to make a break. 26 points to 10. Australia in the lead. Out to Parker. Boasted. Oh, that's a great tackle from Meninga. Finally put to ground by Alexander. That's the kick from Smith. Belcher covering good ground. Took it nicely on the run. Geez, a confident player, Gary Belcher. 
Yes, Thank he's him. a play right up to halfway. He really is a magnificent positional player. Uh, Wayne Bennett tutored him in, in Queensland for a number of years, being a former uh, state and Australian fullback himself, and certainly has managed to pass on a lot of his knowledge to Gary. And uh, the way he manages to position himself on the field certainly makes it a lot easy. There's the pass back in for Bella. Showed great hands as well, but his passing game wasn't up to the same standard. Gary Belcher, in fact, took a long while to really break into state of origin football, Wally, with Colin Scott uh, being up there in Queensland. But he, like Martin Bella this year, when the represented opportunities have, have come, they've really grabbed their opportunities. Yes, they have, and I'm sure that uh, he's going to make things difficult for Gary Jack. He mightn't displace him, but he'll certainly make Gary uh, retain the best form possible uh, to retain uh, his, his test position. Zuckema taking play midway between the half and the quarter line, still at Hull Kingston Rovers end of the ground. Oh, Parker had a bit of a look before he put the ball down, so a scrum will go down with an Australian put in. And the scrum will be fed by Greg Alexander. And I think the crowd told the story. Yes, another penalty against Australia. I think in all fairness, it is very difficult to get the ball into a scrum over here, David. It's just as much Australia's fault uh, as Kingston Rovers because the, the scrums in England certainly do seem to be uh, a lot worse than uh, those in Australia. So, whole Kingston Rovers in possession of the ball inside Australia's half. Broadhurst taking play upfield. But again, some solid defence from Martin Bella. Zook Emma beat Bella's tackle, got it back to Broadhurst. He's wrestled to the ground by Meninga. And also by Greg Dowling. Rudd in number nine, slipping into dummy half. On the blind side goes Smith. Held it back infield for Fairburn. And he takes play to the 22. Rudd, penalty against Australia inside the five. And the quick tap's taken by Parker. Ball's loose on the ground. Oh, that's offside, surely. I think Australia might have come up with the ball there, David, but as you said, it certainly did appear to be uh, slightly offside. There's Elias again from dummy half. Well, let's just hope he doesn't overdo that, uh, that running from that position. He really ran into a brick wall on that occasion. Langmack. Bella. Gee, he shows some great strength. He's 17 stone though, Wally. There's a bit of him. Yes, and he's put on a couple of pounds since he's been here. And uh, Martin says that he's, he's not scared about putting on any weight. He believes that he can play just as well uh, closer towards 18 stone. So I'm <laughs> sure that certainly he'd be a fearsome sight running at you at 18 stone. That's a great kick again for Fairbairn. Taking play inside Australia's end of the ground. So it's 26 points to 10 in favour of the Winfield Kangaroos. Second match of this Kangaroo Tour for 1986. They led by 20 points to 10 at half time. Here's another break by Australia. Langmack held it back up. Alexander, darting run. He's got the support out wide. Greg Alexander, pass for Shearer. And the cover's there in the form of Smith. Meninga. Runs from dummy half. Alexander held it up. Elias. Hull Kingston Rovers a bit thin on the short side here. Elias spotted it. Beautiful pass in for Dunn. Elias. Australia with a chance now. Dowling. Good strong run by the Australian prop. The pass has gone astray. And it's dived on in fact by Andy Kelly. Well, this time, even the whole fans, or the whole Kingston Rovers fans, don't agree with Jerry Kershaw. So a scrum to go down, 10 metres out from the Robins goal line. Crowd of around about eight and a half, nine thousand 9,000 people here tonight at Craven Park. That is capacity. There's Langmac off the back. Langmac beautifully cut down by John Dorohy. 
So Mortimer is the man that goes into dummy half. Dunn stood upright as he charged into that whole Kingston Rovers defence. Watch for Elias here. Out to Alexander. This is good defence by Hull Kingston Rovers. They've been under pressure. Elias went on his own, slipped under another tackle. <laughs> Terry Lamb, Bella. There's the pass for Lamb, beautifully picked up, and a good try disallowed. Well, I think he's no, given the try. No, he's David, given but, the uh, try. What a beautiful pair of hands from Terry Lamb. That's his hat trick. That's beautifully picked up. Yes, you can clearly see it on the replay that he has picked the ball up there, but uh, the referee certainly hasn't earned much of the crowd's uh, pleasure here, and they're letting him know all about it. So Terry Lamb scores his third try. Australia 30, Hull Kingston Rovers 10. Well, I think from memory, Wally, the last Australian to score a hat-trick of tries in his taboo in Great Britain was the famous Reg Gasnier back in 1959-60. So a marvellous opening match for uh, Terry Lamb. Yes, he certainly couldn't have started England any better. So a chance to convert his third try. He's kicked one from one so far. Terry Lamb struck it nicely. Up go the flags. It's 32 points to 10 in favour of Australia. As Hull kicks the Rovers get the ball underway again. Well, you remember this one uh, for a while to come, I should have mentioned, Wally. Oh, this is awesome sight. Melvin Inger running at full speed. <laughs> Terry Lamb loses it. That will have to come back for the scrum. Well, <laughs> Mel had five goes at it. I think he'll come back and play the first knock on. <laughs> so the park of the scrub half for Hull Kingston Rovers comes around, puts the ball into the scrub, and they've won it. Parker wrestled to the ground by Lamb. Emma. Ten metres short of the 22. Australia's end of the ground. Kelly. Good defence again by Australia. Langback went over the top and Dowling underneath. And it goes to Parker. In turn for Speckman and then in turn for Kelly. Terry Lamb is down injured. But he's back to his feet. Back it goes for Smith. Charged down by Dowling into the hands of Broadhurst. Six more tackles to go for Hull Kingston Rovers. 32 points to 10. Australia in the lead. That's Smith that goes down to ground. Good for the ball, about a metre out from the Australian 22. There's Broadhurst with a kick over the top. Back goes Mortimer in defence for Australia. And he's got the ball about a metre out from his own line. Belcher. Well, it really has been an impressive performance by the Australians, Wally, considering that the team that played in the first match the other day was basically a proven combination with maybe a couple of newcomers into that side. But this side tonight really has basically been thrown together for this match. Well, that's right. And uh, I know it concerned a lot of people. Uh, Donny Fernand was a little bit worried uh, in, in the training sessions. It didn't seem to go together all that well, but... Uh, the players have the proven ability on the board. They've played in uh, the Sydney competition and, and some, and of course, Gene in the, in the Brisbane competition, where uh, they've been used to week in, week out, hard, hard efforts, and I'm sure that it hasn't really been all that much trouble for them to combine. Well, it all goes well for the rest of the tour as they set out to emulate the 82 Kangaroos, of which you're a member of, undefeated and through Britain and France. And it looks as though they're well on their way to making it two out of two as Dunn goes crashing upfield just bumps Busby off as if he wasn't there. Alexander Lamb, there's the kick through. Belcher. But the referee... Oh, he's, he's called him offside. Uh, Some Gary Belcher shows his disgust as well. 
and the penalty to Hull Kingston Rovers. Well, maybe Gary Belcher was just a bit quick for the referee there. I don't think he realised that uh, Belcher may have had the ability to be able to cover that match ground. That's an astonishing 14 to 5, the penalty count against Australia, but we're still leading by 32 points to 10. It certainly doesn't come as any real surprise, though, David. Uh, I think it's very rare that Australia ends up in the better half of the penalty counts in England. Busby. Taken in the centre of the ground. Rudd slips in a dummy half. Speckman is first man up off the ruck, putting his foot to the ball. Belcher coming across. He feels it about eight metres out from his own goal line. Oh, good tackle by Smith. Mike Smith, of course, toured Australia in 1979 and 84. Has yet to play a test match against Australia on, on Australian soil. He played, in fact, against the New Zealanders at the second leg of that uh, both tours in 79 and 84. Benny Elias. The pass has gone astray again. Picked up this time by Dowling. That should be six more tackles. Shearer. But good defence. Shearer to his feet. Back it goes for Elias. Oh, Law's made a meal of that. Got around Bella. Oh, great tackle from Paul Langmack. Now Broadhurst. Emma. Parker. Oh, great Good tackle, tackle again from Folks. He's left that man on the ground too, David, and uh, he just amazes people. He certainly amazes me the way he can hit for the size of the bloke. He's got a very big ticket, that's for sure. Gene Miles, burst through, finally put to ground. Folks allows Elias to go into dummy half, and Australia lie down and attack. Alexander, Lamb, the wraparound with Alexander. Beautiful pass. Langmack, oh, Terry yes. Lamb, fourth try, and what a gem that was. Absolute gem by Australia. Yes, I've got to agree with the crowd that time, though, David. There was uh, one pass in there just coming up from Alexander, which was very, very questionable. What a great try, though. Lamb over under the post. His fourth try of the match. So it's 36 points to 10 with the kick to come. Lamb already has scored 20 points of that tally. <laughs> Four tries, two goals from two attempts. It'd be pretty fair to say a reasonably impressive performance in his debut match on English soil. And he's about to add to that tally from right in front. It's a little bit of an understatement to say reasonably, David. He's, uh, he's had a magnificent, st magnificent start to the tour here, and uh, I think he's only going to get better, Barry. He's that sort of player where these conditions will suit him very well. 38 points to 10, Australia in the lead over Hull Kingston Rovers. So play about to get underway again. The restart through the fullback Fairburn, driving it deep into Australia's 22. Tell you what, Paul Dunn has shown some superb hands from those kickoffs tonight, Wally. Yes, we've been playing a little bit of cricket in the hallways at the hotel, and it seems to have rubbed off very well. well of course, Phil Daly is the only player on this tour so far not to have experienced some time out in the middle. We saw Les Davidson come on as a replacement against uh, Wigan at the weekend, but no doubt Phil will get his chance for the next. Game or two is Belcher held the ball up and a beautiful pass again. Australia on the boil. Bella couldn't get down to pick it up. And now Fairburn reply. Oh, what a tackle of Meninga. <laughs> I don't think there's any love lost between those two. Uh, no, uh, well, Mel's not uh, George Fairburn's biggest fan, I can tell you that. Out to Broadhurst. Beat Elias's tackle. Can't beat Bella. But I'll tell you what, uh, we saw some outstanding performance uh, from Brian Niebling in the first match against Wigan. And uh, Greg Dowling and Martin Bell certainly haven't let Australia down tonight. And uh, 
Steve Roach's test partner in the front row is still very much a contentious point, Wally. Well, I think there's a lot of contentious points uh, in this team at the moment, David. And if Terry Lamb keeps going like he is, I'll be buying a voodoo doll, I can tell you. <laughs> so it's, it's great to see that uh, all the players on the tour can produce such good form because it, what it does is ensure that everybody is on their toes week in and week out and uh, certainly makes them produce the best form that they possibly can. Well, Stephen Folks is about to re be replaced by Les Davidson in the Australian camp. Folks looked a bit dodgy with that injury early, but gee, he's been outstanding tonight. Some of his defensive hits have been unbelievable out there. So, Les Davidson is the man about to come on for Australia. Stephen Folks will be the man to come off. Fairbird didn't really want it. <laughs> Boasted. And that's the first time David Laws has hung onto the ball tonight. And a beautiful tackle from, Bar uh, from uh, Terry Lamb. And a penalty in fact goes again against Australia in fact their 15th penalty of the night and Fairburn up quickly this time to look for touch Rudd with the restart of play for Hull Kingston Rovers Emma Dowling was the man around the ankles 30, 6 points to 10, 38 points to 10 in favour of Australia. Dorohy with the chip over the top. Beautifully taken again by uh, Gene Miles. Fairburn wraps him up in the tackle. The dummy half working the blind side again. Lang back to his feet. Paul Dunn charging upfield. Elias in support. So too is Lamb. And in turn, Alexander. Beautiful pass back in for Meninga. Again, Terry Lamb. He's lost the ball on this occasion. But Clark is driven to the turf. Right inside the touchline on the far side. Mortimer. Hello, the touch judges it again. Oh. Well, that probably would be worth having a look at again if we can. I really couldn't see too much wrong with that. Wouldn't be surprised if this touch judge orders a, a video of this game, David. He's featured in the game just as much as the players have. Let's see what happened here. Mortimer drove into the ground there. Now, watch the tackle here, Wally. Very little in that at all, but 16 penalties. And that's the 16th to Hull Kingston Rovers. Taken upfield this time by Zook Emma. 10 metres out from the Australian 22. Broadhurst. Grubbering for touch on the far side and finds it. So the scrum will pack down about 10 metres out from Australia's goal line. And it appears there is going to be a substitution. John Dorohy will be the man coming off and Ray Stead will be the uh, lad coming on. He's only a youngster, in fact only signed for the Colts last week. Has the versatility of being able to play at wing, centre or fullback. And he'll be the man coming on to replace Australia's John Dorohy. So a 19-year-old lad, a great moment in his life playing against the Australian Kangaroos. Alexander from the scrum base. Belcher kept the ball alive to Mortimer. Australia camped inside their quarter. Dunn tries to change that by taking it right up to the, uh, the 22 line. Elias from dummy half, Dowling. Blindside is Langmack. Elias, head down again, but runs straight into the big top forward, Zook Emma. 
and finally goes to ground. 38 points to 10. Australia in the lead. Back it goes. Fairburn and also David Laws. That's him in possession of the ball. Oh, oh what a hit from Meninga. <laughs> well, that's two in a row. I think you summed it up uh, pretty well before, Wally, when you said uh, he wasn't his greatest fan. And I think he's set out tonight to let uh, Fairburn know that he's out of the field. Yes, that's for sure. On that occasion, it was the, uh, the winger who felt the full brunt of, of, of Malcolm's uh, tackling ability. So, another penalty goes against Australia. Mark Broadhurst turned it back inside. Play on the halfway line. The tackle by Bella. The run to the man at dummy half. Out it goes to Ebba. He takes play about five metres upfield. Chris Rudd. Broadhurst. Gee, that's good defence again by Martin Bella. Certainly been a very impressive display for Martin in his, his first uh, time representing Australia. There's the kick over the top from Smith. Taken by Alexander. Good pass for Belcher. Dowling. Takes play to 10 metres inside the Robins end of the ground. Elias. Bella. Unloaded it nicely. Alexander. Support of Meninga. Really, Melbourneinger loves these conditions in England. Superb kangaroo tour of 82. Here comes number Terry five. Terry Lamb, try number five, will it be? Oh. No, he's lost it. If only for uh, Kerry Boosted, not tackling there. But I think could have uh, virtually knocked up a record for a club game in England. What I was about to say, Wally. Uh, oh, here comes the other. These guys, truly, that they, they've got to be kidding. Touch touch it again. The referee has waved the touch touch away. There's the kick from Smith. Retreating is Mortimer, but the ball is out on the fall, and play will come back for the scrum. What I was saying, uh, about to say, Wally, Melmaninger, a superb tour at 82, another outstanding performance with St. Helens. Yes. He really saves it up for over here. I think the heavy grounds really suit the big fella. Certainly does. Plus, uh, Mel's ex exceptionally strong on the upper half of his body. And uh, it's just a waste of time trying to tackle him high. And uh, the English, you would have thought they would have learnt from their last lesson when Mel was over here. Anybody attempting to, uh, to tackle him around the shoulder or chest area will just get swatted off like a fly. Well, believe it or not, another penalty to Hull Kingston Rovers. <laughs> and uh, that now makes it 17 penalties to five, but Australia still lead by 38 points to 10. Zouk Taken again in the tackle by Greg Dowling. Back it goes through Parker. And in turn for Smith. But Australia's defence again equal to the task. And once again the man getting up was Bella. And also the replacement player Davidson. There's the kick from Speckman. And that's a handy kick indeed from the... Uh, Paul KR number 13. Taking play up towards the Australian 22. Well, Wally, it'd be fair to say that uh, there appears to be tremendous spirit in the Australian side. Uh, we've only been over here, what, about 10 days. But the side has seemed to settle in very, very well indeed as a unit. And uh, obviously the confidence is very high for the first test at Old Trafford. Yes, that's right. Uh, as you said, the, the team spirit is marvellous. And it seems to uh, really assist you when you're on a tour. Everybody says, seems to uh, get every, everything and uh, share everything that they do. And I'm sure that uh, if they continue to do so, it's going to be one of the most formidable teams seen in this country. So, Beninga, the kick for touch on this commentary side of Craven Park. Well, I know the catch cry in 82 was one in all in. Wally, wasn't it? That's much the same thing, typical Australian tradition. Yes, and you that's would have right. Seen that here uh, at Craven Park in the first match. Well, that's right. Um, we make a, a point of staying together, doing everything, and uh, same rule as now, just before dinner, everybody gets together to have a drink. And I think it's, it's one of the best things about touring. Everybody manages to stick together very well, and you become very proud of your country. Very proud of Australia's performance here tonight. 38 points to 10 as Bella takes it upfield. 
And he's taken in the tackle by the lock forward, Paul Speckman. Betty Elias. Now for Lamb. He elects to come this side of the ground, putting it over the head of David Moores. And the ball will, in fact, go dead in goal. And play will come back to the quarter line. So time ticking away in the second half of the second match of the Kangaroo Tour for 1986 in Australia in the lead by 38 points to 10. They led by 20 points to 10 at half time. As Elias goes away again, Terry Lamb beat one tackle and beat another. Number five. And this will be try number five it is. Terry Lamb has had an outstanding debut, scoring his fifth try. And that puts Australia in the lead by 42 points to 10. Well, this has got to be some sort of record, Wally, hasn't it? Yes, I can see the voodoo doll coming out very early in this tour. But uh, he really is a, a marvellous support player. And, uh, of course, he's not only shown his supporting skills here, but his ability to step off both feet uh, to easily wrong foot the English defence. So he's decided to give Greg Alexander a kick for goal. He's already kicked three from three. I think he's had a fair outing out there tonight. 26 points from five tries and three goals. And now Greg Alexander. Fourth kicker used on this Australian tour so far. Let's see what he can do. He's missed it. So, the Australians really running away with this encounter now. It's 42 points to 10 in favour of the Kangaroos. Well... Bar Lamb doesn't need too much of an excuse for celebrations. I'm sure he's going to make uh, full use of this tonight, Wally. Yes, uh, and one can't blame him either, mate. Uh, his first game in England, he certainly, uh, I'm sure, made a lot of people sit up and take notice of him. And he hasn't finished with this tour yet, that's for sure. There's Langmac. Lamb's Canterbury teammate. Lamb again with the ball for Mortimer. So the Canterbury players combining over that far side again. Play on the halfway line. It's 42 points to 10. Bella charges upfield for Australia, leaves the ball behind him, and it's finally picked up by Smith. Now they move it through Emma. Oh. Picked up by Dunn and Dowling. Smith. There's a good run by Kelly. 42 points to 10, Australia in the lead. They've scored eight tries to one. There's the kick over the top. Oh, Belcher under pressure. Finally tidied it up. Well, he couldn't blame Gary Belcher on that occasion. The ball came back to him at a great rate of knots. He actually got one hand to it and lost it. But did uh, the thing all good fullbacks should do, and that's recover that mistake. So, Hull Kingston Rovers with the ball. On the blind side. Now to the open side goes Smith. But I think it was the wrong option he took. He ran straight into Martin Bella. Eight metres out from the 22. Stead left it behind. Davidson knocked it on. The referee sells Stead's play on. <laughs> that is advantage, if ever I've seen it. And finally, Busby takes play to the 22. Stead. Back for Smith. Tried to stand the Australian defence up. But once again, he's wrapped up on the quarter line. And a penalty. Mm. Quick tap taken. Broadhurst. Lost by Alexander. Well, that makes the penalty count in favour of Hull Kingston Rovers 18 to 6. <laughs> Out it goes again. Turned back inside for Kelly. Les Davidson there with a good, solid tackle. Back it goes. Smith hoiks it in the air again. Gary Belcher, safe as a bank. Runs it out from his own goal line. And in fact takes it up towards the 22. Of course, the, the bomb rule not uh, operating here in England at the moment, David, with the ball's caught behind. We're still playing under international laws and uh, you've got to run the ball out. Here's a run upfield by Dowling. Knocked down by Laws, and the referee rules the knock on. So, the try scorers for Australia in this match Terry Lamb with five tries, Elias two, and Paul Langmack one. Meninga has kicked two goals from four attempts, Lamb three from three, 
and Alexander has missed his only attempt. And in fact, Australia has scored all the points out there tonight, Wally, because uh, the 10 points that have come up from Hull Kicks and Rovers have all been scored by the Australians who tried to carry Bostead and three goals from four attempts from John Dorohy. So That's it really hasn't right, been a pleasant outing for the, uh, the Robins out here tonight. No, I don't think they've enjoyed it, but I think uh, in those statistics about the Australians scoring all the points, it, it certainly uh, seems to indicate at the moment that, that Australia are a big force in rugby league in this country, uh, not only in these sort of games, but of course for the amount of Australians playing over here. Well, a penalty against Buddy Elias. Pulling back the uh, wing three-quarter David Laws. So George Fairburn to look for touch. Australia led by 20 points to 10 at half time. Currently lead by 42 points to 10. Rudd. That's Smith, left behind, picked up by, guess who, Terry Lamb. Oh, good play, Alexander and Gene Miles combining. Well, those some tempers are fraying. There's a good run by Davidson. Oh, pop the pass up for Dunn. Have a look, oh, he's no. got it. Terry Lamb, unselfish play for Mortimer. And Mortimer goes over for another Australian try that could well have been Terry Lamb's number six, but it comes up with Chris Mortimer scoring in his first appearance for Australia. Totally unselfish play here from the Canterbury Five Open. What a good run by Davidson. Yes, and a great Davidson pass. certainly took everybody on there and slipped a magnificent ball in here. Although a little bit uh, fortuitous, it was still great play to get it there. And now it came across to Alexander. Constant backing up from Lamb. Popped it back in for Mortimer. And Avery went in the corner for another Australian try. In fact, their ninth try of the match. And so big Malcolm Meninga back on the far touchline. His current tally is two goals from four attempts. It's 46 points to 10. Australia rattling up 26 points in the second 40 minutes in a very impressive performance on the second match of the tour. Meninga from touch, far side of the ground. And it's waved away. So the scoreline, 46 points to 10 in favour of the Australian Kangaroos. Well, Wally, what a night it's been for the, the Canterbury boys. They may not have won the grand final this year, but they've scored seven of the nine tries scored by Australia tonight with Lamb with five and Langmack and Mortimer also contributing. Yes, that's right. As we mentioned at the start of the, uh, the coverage here, David, there's certainly a lot of combination out there and they proved uh, just how valuable they are when they do get together. And uh, it's certainly been an outstanding performance, of course, led by Terry. Well, I doubt if there would be any uh, more worthy recipient than the three points in our National Panasonic Man of the Match tonight. The tally of points uh, collated right throughout this tour, and the winner at the end of the tour receives $5,000 of product by courtesy of National Panasonic. But there has also been some other outstanding performances that would have to come into contention. Wally, I know that you've been impressed by Martin Bella. Yes, I have. Uh, for a guy playing his first time in, uh, in Australian colours, it's a, it's a great way to, to start an international career. And uh, for mine, although Terry Lamb uh, did score all of those tries, I think Martin Bella certainly has pressed him all the way for the man of the match. OK, so the final scoreline, 46 points to 10 in favour of Australia. Tries Lamb 5, Langmack, Mortimer and Elias, who scored two tries. Meninga, two goals from four attempts. Lamb, three from three. And for Hull Kingston Rovers, most did a try. John Dorohy kicked three goals from four attempts. And Australia led by 20 points to 10 at half time. My thanks to Australia's touring captain Wally Lewis for joining us in the commentary box tonight. It's been great having you along, Wally. All the best for the rest of the tour, particularly for the first test at Old Trafford in a week or so's time. Thanks very much, David. It's been my pleasure. Okay, and we'll take a break here on Network 10. We'll be back 